Hey, what's up guys, Aaron here, and welcome back to another F122 game experiment. And in today's experiment, we're going to see if we can make Nicholas Latifi a driver's world champion. Why? Because he's the GOAT. The GOAT! I mean, he's not called GOATV for nothing. So today, we're going to try and do everything we can to make this man a driver's world champion. I want to see that animation. Animation with the commentators saying the words, here is Nicholas Latifi, your driver's world champion, and we're going to do it today with this Williams. We've selected him as our teammate, and we're giving the Williams team all the resources they need to make this happen. And I, when I mean the resources, I mean they're going to need every resource they can get to make this man a world championship. So we've got 1 million R&D multiples on multiples of millions of dollars for the team to spend on the facility upgrades because basically the only way this is happening without me just crashing out and holding up the rest of the grid is we need a maxed out car ASAP compared to the rest of the grid. So we kick things off here in a new save in season one and straight away the Williams team weren't making things easy for me. You can't make this stuff up. I bought like multiple upgrades, the max I could at the start of the game and like four of them failed off the bat. It's almost like the AI Williams team has been coded to not want the car to get better and we have our work cut out because you know well you can see where the Williams car is obviously on the baseline we're down there at the bottom although to be fair the GOAT has already beaten Max Verstappen don't look at the DNF there that doesn't matter he's already showing his pedigree against the reigning world champion so we just need to give him a car that's what's been missing from his career he just hasn't had the car to show his skills that's what we're doing in today Today's video. So we continue to plow on. Um, the, the reliability side of things was very like an open goal because Williams started off with spec 2 on the durability. So he did a lot of durability upgrades. I guess to be fair, if there's many DNS, let's see if he could gain some points that way. But this season one is a building season in this experiment of ours. But eventually we do get spec 3. So all the money that we have given Williams, they finally woke up after five races at the Spanish Grand Prix and were able to upgrade every facility to spec three of course in driver career mode that is not something you can do yourself the team ai team has to do it for you so they've finally done that and we are now ahead of aston martin going into the azerbaijan grand prix but even though we've got spec three facilities we still get met with triple failures on the upgrades i don't even know how that happens because with spec three facilities your uh, the, the failure rate is meant to be severely reduced and we then get another Five failures, that was. That was, I think, two on the aero and the chassis or something, and then two reliability upgrades. It's actually ridiculous that with Spec 3, this team is still giving me this many failures. I don't know whether it's because we're buying multiple at the same time, and there's some coding about, you know, the factory being overstretched or whatever, but I just found it so comical that after those upgrades, that we're, we're pretty much failures are meant to be so reduced to 10%. That means we got into that 10% window eight Eight times in a row. But nevertheless, that won't hamper our progress. And going into our home race at the British Grand Prix, we are now the fifth best team on the grid. But that is still not getting Mr. Latifi anywhere near the top step of the podium. And he needs to be getting, of course, multiple race wins if he ever wants to win a Drivers World Championship. So more upgrades are needed, and they come in thick and fast at the Austrian Grand Prix. You saw there, I think, literally six upgrades in one go between the previous Grand Prix and this one and we continue to plow on with so many upgrades I'm sure that this the UI screen is not even meant to know how to handle this many upgrades at the same time I mean you know the listing on the activity timeline goes off the screen uh, there's not even enough room sometimes for enough on the on the R&D shot and so by the time we get to the Red Bull ring we are only one position behind the Red Bull team as we are the second best team on the grid. And that is enough to get us into the top 10 when we simulate the full Austrian Grand Prix weekend. But you can see Nicholas Latifi has still not scored a single point this season. This is why I said at the start, we're going to have to get a maxed out car to have any chance of him actually winning a driver's championship. But we're not going to tell the public that because we're going to sign a new contract and we're going to use our salary bonus 
for this social media perk because we need to defend our teammate out there on social media. We need to be blasting the Go TV propaganda everywhere we can to make sure everyone knows that this man is a Drivers World Champion in the waiting. We continue to make upgrades and continue our journey above and beyond the top of the grid. And now you're really seeing the fruits of that labor of having so many R&D points and now fully maxed out facilities for the team because that is a ridiculous rate of upgrading now into the French Grand Prix. I kind of fit, I, I find it fitting in a way that we've now got, you know, a ridiculous car compared to, well, the rest of the grid as you can see because we've pretty much got a whole fi a grid field spread above Red Bull now, near enough. I kind of find it fitting that it's happened in time for the French GP because if you've been with me for a while on the channel, you'll know Paul Ricard, for whatever reason, has always been a circuit we've done a lot of wacky experiments at. It just seems like a, it's, it has been our experiment circuit. So it's quite fitting that we're now in this ridiculous position at Paul Ricard. But even having this car in this position is not enough for Latifi to even get more than four points in this race. And <laughs> we win the race. The wrong person in the Williams car has won the race. And it's almost like my avatar here in game is, is making a mockery of that as he's shushing us to our face because we've still not got anywhere near a position with Latifi that he's going to become a world champion eventually. So the upgrading needs to continue on. And I want to point out Latifi, obviously with the upgrades, there have been personnel upgrades to the Williams team uh, that affect him just like they do in my team. So he has a boosted stat of 85 rated. He's got 75 focus. So he's so highly focused. His stats are the maximum he's going to get at least right now. Of course, naturally, he can gain a bit more overall by just doing more and more races. But he's 85 rated. That's as good as he's going to get. That should be enough. I feel, to, to maybe get close to start winning races, but we go on to Hungary, and he's not even on the podium. We win the race again, which I, I'm, this is the first time I'm going to be disappointed about winning a race in a Williams car, because I want him to be there. He needs to be displacing me. So we continue to pour R&D points into this car and team. We continue to improve the car and get near to a maxed out Williams car, and it's going to happen pretty soon, because the trajectory just keeps on getting crazier and crazier. Bit of a plateau into Hungary, but then at the Belgium Grand Prix, another massive leap. And now we're pretty much two field spreads, i.e. the gap from Red Bull to Aston Martin. We are three times that, two times that ahead of Red Bull. And finally, finally, this man wins a Grand Prix in Formula 1. It's taken till the Belgian Grand Prix with a million R&D, many millions of dollars, but we've done it. We've now got this Williams car to a point where the team are getting a 1-2, but more importantly, Latifi has now taken matters into his own hands. He's beating us in the simulation, and he is winning Grand Prix. Because we have now got a maxed out Williams car, and he is now in a position going to Season 2. He's in a position to win his first ever Drive. Drivers World Championship. Now, I fell asleep a little bit whilst going through the menus and simulating the rest of the season, and I actually didn't clock that there was an R&D reset into Season 2, but it doesn't matter. We've still got maxed out aero, maxed out chassis. It's just the engine and durability that got reset, but durability won't matter. The engine, well, our aero and chassis is still good enough that he's going to kick off this season at the Bahrain Grand Prix by winning that race. And so now we have to come to terms with we have created an absolute machine, a monster. He is laughing in the face of this Formula 1 grid because he will go on to win every single race he then participates in in this career mode. He wins in Bahrain, he wins in Imola. He becomes the master of Monaco in this season ahead of some very big names and teams in this sport. And the Williams team, they're just chuffed. They're, they're chuffed a bit. They haven't seen this much success since... 
2014, probably a little bit. I, I was, I was uh, struggling to find the year when they last had a massive amount of success and good podiums, etc. But in terms of this many wins, I can't even remember the last year where Williams won this many races. And it's all at the hands of this Canadian, number six, Latifi. He wins the British Grand Prix, the home race for this team. And the whole time we've been the best teammate in the world to him. We've been retiring every single race to allow him to be the single Williams on the top step of this podium. And it means that Austria, well. And with that, another year of Formula One draws to a close and a new World Drivers' Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. We have done it. We have made Nicholas Latifi the F1 Drivers' World Champion. It can be done just with a max start car versus everyone else two years of development behind but you can be done and, and we've somehow also made an invisible cameraman there as well we're literally performing miracles and magic it would seem in today's experiment video but we have successfully managed to do what we set out to do at the start of this video and with that guys if you have enjoyed it hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below and you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content and i'll see you guys next time goodbye